Commission and approved the Memorandum of Understanding between the Republic of Zimbabwe and Life Academy on cooperation in the field of energy. The memorandum provides a governing framework for cooperation and investment in the development of renewable energy sources, thereby boosting the use of clean energy in the country. The Memorandum of Understanding underscores government's commitment to enhance local generation of energy, which is expected to lead to increased access to affordable, reliable, renewable energy and access to electricity by the vulnerable and disadvantaged communities of our country. Life Academy is a global actor in capacity building and knowledge exchange for sustainable development and was commissioned by the Swedish Development Cooperation Agency, SIDA, to plan and implement a global capacity development program on renewable energy to contribute to the development of renewable energy and energy efficiencies. The program will be premised on three pillars, which are as follows, learning and knowledge transfer, change management and experience sharing to include policy formulation, technology solutions and investments. This program will seek to develop modern and sustainable energy systems inclusive of all forms of renewable energy such as solar, wind, hydro, bio which includes waste to energy and geothermal. The development of these renewable energy sources will promote sustainable use of natural resources and environmental conservation. The envisaged training program which has already commenced, will be expanded to benefit many Zimbabweans as part of the broader human capacity development program for the nation, which is in line with Vision 2030. Then Cabinet was also briefed on the industrial action by doctors uh, and city of Harare nurses, and this was done by the Minister of Health and Child Care, Dr. Obedaya Moyo. The strike by the doctors over conditions of service has now gone beyond over 70 days. The minister informed cabinet as follows. On the Harare City Council nurses, the situation at the municipal clinics remains constrained as only 35 out of the expected 105 nurses turned up for duty at the five poly, poly clinics and one hospital. The nurses had withdrawn their labor over delayed salary payments, but are still refusing to resume duty, even after receiving their salaries. The action by the nurses is illegal, and the employer has been advised to commence disciplinary processes on the striking nurses, this is in line with the country's laws. As such, therefore, only those nurses reporting for duty will be paid while their conditions of service are being looked into. Meanwhile, and mindful of the hardships innocent patients are facing as a result of this illegal job action, Harare City Council has rationalized services to polyclinics as follows. Mabuku, Safara, Kwazana, Mfakose, Hatefield, and Glenview. The Beatrice Road Infectious Diseases Hospital is also attending to patients. Cabinet is concerned about doctors and pharmacies that are demanding payment for their services as well as for medicines in United States dollars. This practice is illegal and should be stopped forthwith. Those unwilling to comply with the laws of the, of the, risk, or, or the laws of the country risk a withdrawal of their licenses. Under, ministry, under the Ministry of Health and Child Care Hospital doctors, a total of 322 disciplinary cases have so far been heard, and the 286 doctors were found guilty and have been discharged. A further 93 doctors from central hospitals 
and 55 from provincial hospitals will have their disciplinary hearings concluded by the 15th November and 27th November 2019, respectively. Up to now, a total of this week, a total of 75 doctors were therefore dismissed. Government is still committed to dialogue with the striking doctors, and a meeting has been scheduled for Thursday, 14th November 2019. Government is working flat out to ensure availability of resources in the health institutions, as well as improve the conditions of service for all health personnel. In particular, the provision of institutional accommodation is being pursued in order to alleviate the challenges that affect service delivery in the short, medium to long term. Government is also taking firm steps to ensure the engagement of nurses who have hitherto been unemployed and to expedite recruitment of personnel for training as health practitioners. That is for the striking doctors and nurses. Uh, then Cabinet also considered and approved the National Prosecuting Authority Amendment Bill 2019, which the Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs presented. The proposed amendments are primarily aimed at improving the operations of the National Prosecuting Authority and revamping its governance structures. The amendments would thus pave way for the creation of the National Prosecuting Authority Board headed by a chairperson appointed by His Excellency, the President. The Prosecutor's General shall be the Deputy Chair. The Deputy Chairperson shall be thus free to devote more time to the prosecution duties relating to his office. The Chairperson and the Deputy Chairperson shall be of different genders. The National Director of Prosecutions shall become the Deputy Prosecutor General, while a Secretary will be appointed to serve on that board. The other members of the board shall be a Commissioner of the Civil Service Commission, appointed by the Chairperson of the Civil Service Commission. And five members will be appointed by the President after consultation with the Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. To ensure consistency in the country's laws, Section 7 of the Criminal Procedure and Evidence Act shall be amended in accordance with the amendments to the National Prosecuting Authority Act. Once enacted into a law, the National Prosecuting Authority Amendment Bill 2019 will make the authority more effective and efficient in carrying out its constitutional mandate as part of the reforms being undertaken by the Second Republic. Cabinet also received a report on the country's power supply situation. This was given by the Minister of Energy and Power Development, Honorable Chas. Cabinet remains seized with the current power outages that are adversely impacting on production across all sectors of the economy. Of major concern is the vandalism that is being perpetrated by unruly elements on electricity transmission and distribution infrastructure. Measures to curtail this trend which is tantamount to sabotage are being instituted. Investors are being invited to participate in the development of alternative technologies intended to minimize the acts of vandalism and theft of essential equipment. Cabinet further wishes to inform the nation that the fault which occurred around midnight on 11th November, that's yesterday, has since been attended to successively resulting in the restoration of expected power supplies early morning today. As the country's power generation capacity faces challenges, mainly as a result of the drought that has adversely affected the main hydroelectric power station at Kariba, power augmentation projects are being implemented countrywide. That is for the country's power supply situation. We also received a report on the Tokyo Mukosi National Programs and Projects. The Minister of Women Affairs, Community, Small and Medium Enterprises Development briefed Cabinet on the projects and that government is approved for women 
under the Tugui Mukosi Development Initiative. The ministry has managed to register a total of 241 fishery cooperatives as follows. In Chiwi District, 128 cooperatives. In Cherezi District, 20 cooperatives. In Mashingo District, 69 cooperatives. And in Mwenezi District, 16 cooperatives. Cabinet is further informed that it is further informed that a total of 45 women farmers have so far been assisted and referred to the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Water and Rural Settlement to enable them to apply for irrigation plots and commercial land at Tugimokosi. It is expected that the empowerment of women will soon make a significant contribution to household national food security. I, that brings us to the end of today's cabinet briefing. I thank you. Thank you. The question was from Kei Tafamba, and I think her question was uh, the, how much more research is government doing in the, I, I don't know whether it's in all the other things or in the renewable energy, but I, I, all what I can say, I see Mr. Honorable uh, Chassis is not here to give the real details, but I think research, you continuously do research. You do, there is no limit to research. I think we are working on making sure that we get the best out of what we want. So as to how much uh, as you wanted to, that detail I don't have. As you can see, the Minister just is not here. Zamaida uh, Murgira, that's Herald. Uh, it's a lot of questions on the NPA Amendment Bill. Uh, uh, he says, what are the, what, what did you see to change that the PG should no longer chair? And uh, why also did you remove the requirement of going through parliament? And he says, uh, it looks like you've conferred unilateral powers to the president to, in making those appointments. So, here we go. Thank you, Honorable James. Uh, my response to the question is, if you go to section 459 of the Constitution, subsection 10, it speaks about the need to have an act of parliament that must provide for the appointment of a board to employ persons to assist the prosecutor general. The key word there is to employ persons. So this board is a specific function, which is employment and administration. The prosecutor general is a specialized person with a job to prosecute. So in terms of good governance, you would rather the prosecutor general concentrate on the key function that is hired to do, that is prosecution, which entails that he has to exercise his mind along those lines and the board will then assist him. So it's, it's good governance to separate the chair of the board and the prosecutor general, and so that the prosecutor general is freed and has time to do the prosecution work. And you, 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 your other question was, why did we remove the requirement of going through parliament? According to the current law, the, the prosecutor general was not appointed through parliament. It was through JS, which has actually a very huge anomaly. The Prosecutor General is not part of the Judicial Service Commission. In fact, he appears before the judiciary. And these are the ones that were uh, motivating the appointment and disappointment of, of the Prosecutor General. That is what we are cleaning up in terms of the constitutional amendment and not through the NPA bill. The NPA bill, what we are simply doing, we had several anomalies, like the appointment of the uh, secretary to the board. The secretary to the board was the accounting officer, but he was reporting, he or she was reporting to the secretary, uh, permanent secretary to the Minister of Justice, yet this is an independent commission, and there, there was an anomaly. And we also are cleaning it up to ensure that we have deputy prosecutor generals as opposed to having director or national director of prosecution. So this is to clean it up, ensure that the NPA operates efficiently as compared to the structure that is there currently, I think. Uh, thank you. Pointing from a poll that he didn't choose. If you go through the bill, the Minister of Finance has got an input, the Chairman of Public Service, the Minister of Justice. So from those, that's where the President is getting the Chairman. 
and this is a critical board that we need the, the, the head of state to also ensure that we have a proper person being appointed the chairman of the board. I just wanted to chair the issue of the Zida bill was not discussed in part cabinet today, but I can assure you I stored it on order paper today and we are going to expedite it. And in terms of property rights and rule of law, I'm sure you have seen several pieces of legislation that we passed the company's bill, judicial laws amendment that took into consideration that we have to create a commercial courts to settle commercial disputes. We want to have virtual courts. All that has been done by government in the Second Republic to ensure that we create an environment where the ease of doing business, the environment is good. So that is what we are doing. And we will continue to do that going forward. On the Life Academy the agreement, this is an agreement where uh, Life Academy, with the support from CEDA, will ensure that we have the relevant knowledge in terms of renewable energy. So if in their training, I presume, if issues of climate change, because they are essential to, to the use of renewable energy come, uh, come, come into play, maybe perhaps <coughs> they, they will be discussed. But the essence of the agreement was Zimbabwe is going to benefit from Life Academy in terms of the grant that we are going to get in, terms the, in training our, our, our people from the Ministry of Energy and Power Development in terms of renewable energy. That's all I can say. Thank you very much. Just before I come to